Bill Goodwin speaking for Lever Brothers, makers of Swan, the new white floating soap that's pure as fine cast steel. Well, it's Tuesday night again, time for another pleasant visit with George Burns and Gracie Allen, our guests, Brian Don Levy, Jimmy Cash, Felix Mills and his orchestra, and the Swan Test. <laughs> And Gracie. Now it's morning in the Burns home, and George is pacing up and down the living room in a somewhat unusual costume. Tan shoes, tan socks, tan trousers, and no shirt. Gracie, this is ridiculous. Couldn't we find somebody else to do our laundry? Well, I'd rather not, dear. We've always traded with her in the Chippy Laundry Company. How long have they had my shirt? Six weeks. It's a fair size, Jiffy. Oh, I'm kind of glad your shirts haven't come back. You look so manly without one. You really think so? Yeah, you're Mama's great, big, bare chested caveman. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Oh, I love a man's figure when it starts out real broad and then tapers right off. That's how it is with your shoulders and hips. It is? Yes. You see, you're a yard wide here, and then you get narrower and narrower until we get right up to those darling little shoulders. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dream man. Mm, I love your figure, George. And you know what gives me a thrill? What? The hair on your chest. Oh, go. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a cute little curly one. <laughs> Yeah. I've always been fond of it, too. <laughs> Honey, how about you washing a shirt for me right now? Well, I'd love to, Judge, but my career starts in a half hour. Your career? My dramatic career with the Upstairs Greek Art Theater. The Upstairs Greek Art Theater? Yes. Art Theater is upstairs over Nick's Acropolis Cafe. I see. And it's under the direction of that great Shakespearean actor, Nigel Bolingbroke. Bowling broke is no actor. He's a pool room bum. Oh, that's not true, George. Could a pool room bum get financial backing from a man like Chester Van Wert? Who's Chester Van Wert? Who's Chester Van Wert? My goodness. Don't you ever read the papers? Well, sure. Well, who do you think delivers them? <laughs> oh, little dirty face Chester. Oh, that's him, yes. Oh, come in. Well, greetings, fair lady. It is I, Bowling Broke. Oh, hello, my show. You're just the man I want to see, cue ball. Good looks, man. Your torso is on class. Yes, isn't it thrilling? Doesn't George have a chest like a caveman? Yes, now that you mention it, it does cave a bit. <laughs> Look, cue ball, do you have to get my wife mixed up in that broken-down Greek theater of yours? Broken down? My good man, I very nearly had Orson Welles in my company. Unfortunately, he was unable to attend rehearsal. Yes. Well, you see, George, since he married Rita Hayworth, he seems to stay home more. <laughs> Gracie, all this chiseler is trying to do is get your money. Oh, no, George. He didn't get a cent of my money. Well, good. Uh, all I did was give him $25 of your money. What? <laughs> it wasn't just a trifling sum to appease the landlord. Nick the Greek. Well, I already nicked him for a few bucks. Oh, oh, me. <laughs> You mean the landlord? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, that's twenty-five dollars down the drain. Oh no, sir, no! Your wife has talent, Mister Burns. You see, you did not marry just an ordinary woman. You can say that again. <laughs> oh, thank 
Thank you, George. You're welcome. Oh, uh, what play are we going to do, Mr. Bolingbroke? Well, I am dickering for the right to that magnificent dramatic vehicle, The Sin of Madelon Fodnick. <laughs> but I need another $25 to close the deal. Hi, people. Oh, hello, hello Bell. Yeah, I found this box of laundry on the front porch. I guess you need it, George. That shirt you're wearing fits kind of loose. <laughs> I happen to be, I happen to be bare from the waist up. Oh, oh I see what Bill means, Dan. Please tuck it in. <laughs> Give me that laundry. I'll go and put on a shirt. Okay, so long, thin up, boy. <laughs> now, as I was saying, Mrs. Burns, we need $25. Oh, hello, cue ball. I didn't see you. Hello. As I was saying, perhaps we could find a leading man with 20 Why, Mr. Goodwin. My dear, handsome Mr. Goodwin. Huh? What a profile. What a voice. Let me hear you do a line, any famous line from a great play. For example, I have $25. I have $25. Oh, no, no, no. With feeling, you've feel? got to actually have $25. <laughs> you uh, do have 25 don't you? Oh, sure. Never mind the line. You'll do. <laughs> Q-Ball, what's this all about? My boy, for the paltry sum of $25, I shall make you a matinee idol. A greater kick to the chicks than Frank Sinatra. <laughs> women, women will fling themselves at your feet. They'll mark you, they'll tear off your clothes. Oh, they do that now. <laughs> what? Well, sure, they know I carry a bar of swine in my inside pocket, and they try to get it. <laughs> Mr. Goldfinger. Well, you can't blame them. Swan has four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, for bathing the baby, the soap for your dishes, and your light laundry. Swan, the new white floating soap, is four soaps in one. Oh, forget about the soap. Think of your career. Wouldn't you like to walk out on that stage and thrill an audience? Hold them spellbound? Well, sure I would. Well, you can do it. Oh, gee. You mean I can wash a pan full of dishes with Swan right, right out on the stage? Oh. <laughs> Just watch that audience when they see that dish pan fill up with Swan suds. And when I explain that Swan is so mild, it helps prevent your hands from getting all rough and red, helps keep them looking beautiful, they'll cheer. Gee, for an encore, maybe I'll even wash some bobby socks. <laughs> all right, Mr. Goodwin, all right, let's forget the play for a moment. If, if, if you'll just give me the uh, 25. Oh, the, the, the cool, green, crisp folding stuff? <laughs> yes, yes, if you please. Uh, okay, well, you come out to the car, and I'll unwrap 25 bars of Swan and give you the wrap. Oh, no! You're very foolish, Swan, is your best wartime buy. Hey, hey, look at this. They sent me the wrong laundry. This is Brian Donlevy's laundry. Are you sure, dear? Certainly. Let me see the ticket. Yeah, it's Donlevy's laundry, all right. See, here are his initials on every piece. B.D. B.D. Oh, George. What? If his middle initial is B, you've been wearing his underwear for years. <laughs> One of you see that Don Levy gets this. I'm going to call that laundry and give him a piece of my mind. Hey, look at this shirt. What a chest that Don Levy has. Mm, yes. Why can't we get someone like him for our leading man? Why can't... Hey, why can't we? I'm pretty sure he could raise $25. Well, it's an excellent thought. Uh, uh, hasten over with his laundry and try to con him into... Uh... Uh, persuade him to join us. Hmm? Oh, I will. And Mr. Bolingbroke, yes? uh, rewrite Mr. Don Levy's part so he can wear a sweater. <laughs> Here's our singing star for the favorite ballad of the season, Jimmy Cash. sweet you are, how dear your tenderly smiling face. Through days all bitter and gray and grim, through nights when even the stars are dim. Oh, sweet. 
Dorothy has determined that Brian Donlevy shall be her leading man in the upstairs Greek art theater. So now, with his laundry under her arm, she's knocking at the door. Oh, hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Donlevy. Yeah. Well, won't you come in? Oh, I'd love to. Um, here, here's your laundry. Oh, thank you for bringing it in. You're uh, Gracie Allen, aren't you? Well, yes. Well, that's my stage name. In private life, I'm Mrs. George Burke, you understand? Oh, of course. It's like uh, Annabella being Mrs. Tyrone Power or Barbara Stanwyck being Mrs. Robert Taylor. You have the same sort of married life. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> Well, uh, what did you want to see me about, Mrs. Burns? Oh, something that I'm sure will interest you. Um, Mr. Don Levy, did you ever think of becoming an actor? Well, yes, I've considered it. In fact, I've gone so far as to appear in a couple of pictures. Uh, oh, no, I, I don't mean the movies. I mean the legitimate stage. The theater of the Lumps and the Barrymores and the Ritz Brothers. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm quite happy in the cinema of Garbo and Dietrich and Minnie Mouse. <laughs> oh, oh poodle movies. They're just a lot of celluloid. What the people want to see today is flesh and blood. And you got so much of it. <laughs> Thank you very much. I suppose. <laughs> and just think, for only $25, you can become the leading man of the Upstairs Greek Art Theater. Oh, well, you'd better count me out, Mrs. Burns. There must be some other actor in Hollywood, though, who has $25. No, but I, I like you. I want you to have the chance to play opposite America's greatest actress. Oh, she's a member of the Upstairs Greek Art Theater? Oh, sure. Not Catherine Cornell? No. B Bette Davis? No. Helen Hayes? No, better than those. Gee, I'd love to meet her. Well, how do? Ah, <laughs> uh, you, uh, you must think I'm an awful fool not to have known, huh? <laughs> All right. Those other girls are good, too. Uh, shall we go to the high school? Well, I'm afraid I can't get away right now. You see, Cary Grant's coming over, and we're going to do some knitting. <laughs> but, um, we'd be magnificent together. Can't you just see us doing Macbeth? You could be Mac, and I could be Beth. <laughs> I'm sorry, Grace. Oh, are you mad, Brian? It's the chance of a lifetime. We're putting on a play that I know you'll adore. The Sin of Madeline Fudnick. The what? The sin of Madeline Fudnick. Well, with a name like that, how'd she ever get the chance? <laughs> oh, Brian. Brian, say you'll do it. Uh-uh. Well, if, if it's the money, I might get you in for $20. Uh-uh. Well, 15 if you wear your own tuxedo. Uh-uh. In one scene, you get to kiss me on the cheek. Uh-uh. Both cheeks? Uh-uh. 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 <laughs> oh, it's no use, Gracie. I'm just not the man for the job. Well, I guess I may as well be going then. You sure you won't reconsider? No. Sorry, Gracie. Well, goodbye, and thanks for bringing in my laundry. Oh, you're well... The laundry? Hmm. Yes, the laundry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, you're welcome. Um, I hope you liked the way I washed your things. The way you wash them. Yes, I, I hope I didn't put too much starch in your socks. Wait a minute. You mean you take in washing? Yes, my husband makes me. <laughs> oh, well, that's... Oh, but I sent my clothes to the In a Jiffy Laundry Company. Well, when I, I don't take in enough money... Yeah. He sneaks bundles off laundry trucks for me to do. Oh, that man is a beast. Oh, no, it's not his fault. He can't help himself. You see, he's uh, he's money mad. Horrible. Uh, that's why you must do this play with me. I want the stage, not the awful drudgery of the wash tub. Well, that's... Oh, Mr. Don Levy, I've got a great talent. Don't let her get caught in the ringer. <laughs> You poor girl. How long has George been money mad? Well, um, I noticed it the very first night we were married. No, yeah. not on your honeymoon. Yeah. He, he only rented one hotel room for the two of us. <laughs> well, uh, maybe that wasn't just to save money. Well, it... <laughs> it was 
Pardon, sir. It wasn't the one room I minded. Mm. But I, I don't think George should have sublet the divan to a hosiery salesman. Holy <laughs> no. You mean on your wedding night you shared your room with a hosiery salesman? Oh, yeah, and that wasn't the worst of it. Oh? Well, well what was? Well, George wouldn't let me buy anything from him. <laughs> what a married life you've had. Yeah. So please, Mr. Donnelly, please say you'll be in the play with me so I won't have to take in washing anymore. Don't you worry, little girl. I promise you'll never have to wash clothes again. Oh, hello, Don Levy. You little rat. <laughs> huh? What do you do with all the money? What, uh, what money? You know what money. Don't shout at me. What's the matter? You afraid I'll wake up a salesman on the divan? <laughs> now, look here. Hey, where's your wash tub? On the back porch. Get out there and fill it with water. But I can't swim. You're not going to swim. <laughs> you're not swimming. You're going to do my laundry. No, see here. Got going, come on. <laughs> yes, sir. Now for Felix Mills and his orchestra, the novel Mills arrangement of Sunday, Monday, or Always. made my wife take in washing. I'm trying to take it. Keep washing, Burns. But I've been at this for hours. Can't I quit now? Yeah. You can quit when you've got that shirt snow white. But it's a green shirt. <laughs> Keep washing, Burns. Oh. Hello. I... Well, Rebley Ev Deb, if it isn't Bubbles Burns. <laughs> Bill. Let him alone, Bill. He's doing my laundry. Oh. Well, that's a very nice arrangement you boys have, Briny. What do you do for him, cook? <laughs> Look, Bill, will you explain to this big Why, lot... Briny, are those dainty little things yours? Oh, I didn't mean to bring those here. <laughs> Gee, and he wears pink ones. Please explain to Don. See, Briny, I'm, I'm glad you've got George using Swan soap. Swan is four soaps in one, not only great for flimsy things, but just the soap for your dishes, for bathing the baby, and for your own hands and face tub or shower. Four swell soaps in one. Bill, just tell Don Levy that Gracie... Keep washing, Burns. Yes, sir. And go easy on my flimsy things. Yes, sir. <laughs> ah, 
what a picture you make bending over that tub, George. I can almost see a little kid... I can almost see a little kid running in from school, grabbing you by the apron strings and saying, Save me with swan. Oh, Swan is great for kids. It's pure as fine Castile's and so mild, too. Just what the doctor ordered. And you know, Brian, if swan is kind to a baby's tender skin, it's just got to be swell for us grown-ups. You can't buy a finer soap for your complexion. Bill, now just tell Don Levy that Gracie... Keep washing, Burn. I finished your laundry. I washed every dainty unmentionable. (laughs) And I must say, a beautiful job, George. Now break the swan in two, take half inside, and start on the dishes. Now, Bill. Well, that's why swan breaks in two. So you can use half in the kitchen and half in the bathroom or wherever you need it. Bill, will you just explain Oh, the... all right, George. What is it? What do you want me to tell Don Levy? I just want you to tell him the truth. Does Gracie take in washing? Well, of course not. Are you trying to make Don Levy believe she does? What do you think he is, stupid? Oh, George. <laughs> well, all right, so I'm stupid. But this is your fault, George. What's the matter with you? Don't you know how to handle your own wife? Well, sometimes I think I don't, and sometimes I'm positive I don't. (laughs) The idea of letting her run around telling wild stories just so she can do some broken-down play. I suppose you could stop her. Easy. I could talk her out of... Oh, George, I... Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Don Levy. Hello. How are things in the wet wash racket? Oh. No, I, um, I just made that up. About taking in washing. Funny joke, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> George didn't think so. Well, um, shall we run over my plane, Mr. Don Levy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Oh, wonderful. I'll go get the script. Hey, what's the idea, Don Levy? I thought you were going to talk a lot of it. I've got a better idea. I'm going to louse this scene up so badly she'll never want to hear of me or the theater again. Here she comes. Oh, yep. here's the script, Mr. Don Levy. The sin of Madeline Budnick. I'm Madeline and you're my sin. <laughs> I can't wait to get my teeth into it. Where do we start? Oh, well, we'll just open it at random. Hmm. Artists such as you and I can read any line and they'll all sound the same. Right. Oh, let's see now. Oh, this is a scene where Madeline did farewell to Boris, a Russian nobleman who wanted to marry her. Would you like to try it? Sure, let's go. Um, oh, no, Boris. Our love can never be. You are a Russian nobleman and I am only a simple fuzzy. Go back. Go back to your own land, Boris. Go back to Russia. Faith and be God, I'm Madeline, me darling, and it's breaking me heart. <laughs> uh, however, if it's after telling me go to go that it is you are, <laughs> is all a Russian gentleman can do. Oh, oh Brian, that was wonderful. <laughs> Huh? Wonderful. Didn't you hear the act? Oh, yes, and I adored it. We'll rewrite the whole scene and make Boris a Frenchman, just as Mr. Don Levy did. <laughs> yes, and you can call him Axel. Sure. <laughs> shall, um, shall we try another scene, Mr. Don Levy? Oh, sure, by all means. Well, here's a nice one. Tell me, beloved. Oh, wait. George, before I go any further, you'd better give me a little hug. What for? Well, I'm about to play a love scene with Brian, and I want you always to remember me as I was. <laughs> Play the same. Play the same. Uh, ready, Mr. Don Levy? Take it. <clears throat> Tell me, beloved, why are we drawn so irresistibly together? Because you are a woman, Madeline, and I am a man? <laughs> oh, my. oh, my goodness, Mr. Don Levy, what an unusual interpretation. Yeah, terrible, wasn't it? Oh, no, it was marvelous. You're so much in love with me that you're not even sure what you are. Oh, yeah. Well, let's do the next one. All right. There are stars in your eyes, my dearest one. You have the soul of a poet, and I must have you near me always. Straighten me. It's the same with me, Madeline. Use as a girl in a million. Without you, life would have no point. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, but it was. You made me see the hero as he really is. A cute brute. I'll give up, Ryan. You're licked. Wait. We've still got a chance. Now, Gracie, you think I played the scene well? Oh, you were exquisite. Well, one of us was awful, so it must have been you. Why, Mr. Donald? Now, wait a minute. Uh, Look, George, come here. You read that part and show her how it should be done. Come on. Me? Yeah. Come on, this will discourage you. Now... Start with this speech, George. Well, okay. 
Tell me, beloved. Why are we drawn so irresistibly together? Because I am a man, Madeline. And you are a woman. Only one thing frightens me, man of my dreams. What if fate should part us? What if I should be snatched from your arms? Oh, don't. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, you beautiful, fragile creature. That face, that figure, they drive me mad. Mad, do you hear me? Mad. Oh, boy. Stop. Oh, please stop. <laughs> Oh, you had enough, huh? Oh, yes, and I see what you mean. I could never play that part. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I thought I was a great actress, but I was wrong. Mm. I'll step aside, Brian. George will be your leading lady. Oh, oh no. no. you're coming right back. Meanwhile, I'd like to remind you that there's ammunition for the next attack right in your kitchen. Yes, in waste kitchen fat. There's glycerin in waste fat, and glycerin is needed in the bombs and bullets and shells for our boys. So save all the waste fat you can. Melt down solid fats, too. Strain them into a clean tin can. And as soon as you have a pound or more collected, take it to your meat dealer. He'll pay for it. How about it, friends? Try to get a pound of waste kitchen fat on its way to the munition factories in time for the next American offensive. Well, here again are radio's lovable Mr. and Mrs. George and Gracie Burns. Gracie, will you drop the subject? Oh, but George, I mean it. Drop it. You you have a great talent. Hmm. And Brian Donnelly thought you did a wonderful job, too. Did he really? Yeah. He wants you to, to do his laundry every week. Oh, good night. <laughs> The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune into your CBS station again next week, same time. We'll have as our guest star, Ray Milland, appearing in the interest of the third war bond drive. Remember George Burns and Gracie Allen, CBS next Tuesday night. And don't forget to listen to Swan's other show, Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou, next Friday night over another network. And now till next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? Good night, everybody. <laughs>